So at one time you were wanted dead or alive? <laughs> Hello folks, welcome back to In The Gayborhood. This time my guest is rock and roll drummer, social worker, Bon Jovi fan, and teen community organizer, Hal Eisenberg. Hal and I talk about the great programs his nonprofit organization, Windows of Opportunity, has for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered teens, and up and coming fashionistas. Enjoy. So today in the gayborhood, uh, we are here in Whitestone, Queens at Francis Lewis Park. It's gorgeous out here. It's a beautiful July day. And I have with me my dear friend Hal Eisenberg. And Hal has a wonderful organization called Windows of Opportunity. And what Windows does is they have tremendous programs for high school kids and, and all sorts of programs. So Hal, first of all, uh, one of the things that you all do is you have started a, a gay straight alliance at Benjamin Cardozo High School. Yeah. Now, here's the thing with that. Here's what I. Here's what it fascinates me about you. <laughs> what fascinates me about you is you're a straight guy. You you're a rock and roll guy. You're a drummer, and yet you do so much to empower gay teenagers. Can can you tell me how you came to that? It started actually probably about 10 years ago. I had a student come to me who had a partner who was struggling with his sexual identity and he was having suicidal thoughts about it. Uh -huh. um, and through working with him and, and empowering him and um, kind of adapting his, you know, to his identity, uh, Afterwards, the student said, you know, there's a lot of students struggling. We need to do something for the students in these, in, you know, in our school. Yeah. So from there, uh, we formed the Gay Straight Alliance. And uh, what was really fascinating for me uh, about the Gay Straight Alliance was the word gay was in it and the word straight was in it. Mm -hmm. And to me, that alone just sent a very, very strong message um, yeah. that we all have to work together to get along, whether you're black, white, gay, straight, no matter what your background is. Yeah. And from there, the program just um, grew and grew and grew. And next thing I knew, I had 70 kids in my office. 70 kids. Yeah. And, uh, and then other schools, we started doing open mics and we started doing support groups and then other schools were asking us to come in and start GSAs in their school and help support them and run workshops and it just grew and grew and grew and here we are. Um, we now have a program that's kind of stemmed off from that um, because I'm not with the New York City school system anymore, I'm just with Windows of Opportunity, but we have a very similar program called Outreach and the uh, word OUT is in capital letters, O-U-T and then awesome. REACH. Awesome. So how? What is it that, that shifted for you in your life that allowed you to really be there for gay folks, especially gay teenagers? You know, I think it was a, a culmination of events. Um, you know, growing up, I didn't have anybody there for me, uh, and I, I had no support. So when I was kind of lost and confused and looking for, for my own personal identity, um, I remember being being lost and confused and yeah. alone. And I, when I grew up, I didn't want other kids to, to feel that also. Uh, and then when I... Um, when I was married to my ex-wife, um, she had a lot of friends who were gay, and I went to a couple of commitment ceremonies, yeah. and, and you know, and I realized, you know, why are all these stereotypes out there? Why are all, why is all this violence out there? I mean, gay people are human, you know, and um, and they're they're awesome. And I was like, why are we looking at them as gay? Why are we looking at them as straight? You know, they're just yeah. they're just people question I want to ask you about is you have a program called HELP, yes. which stands for HIV Empowerment and Leadership Program. So tell me more about that because I'm really, really inspired by that. This is a phenomenal program that we've been running for, for nine years now. Um, there's a lot to this program. Um, we, we discovered, uh, this also came from a student that we empowered who came to us and said, how I, um, I feel like you know my friends are not getting the proper education on HIV awareness and safe sex. Yeah. I've got friends who have STIs. I have a friend who has HIV. Um, I have friends that are affected by teen pregnancy, and they're not getting that sense of empowerment to make healthy choices. They're not caring about themselves. So we started to do some like little workshops with with some of the teenagers, and from there. They were so successful, the school started asking us to do them school-wide. 
And from there, it grew into a gigantic conference that we run um, every year. And we invite schools from all over the five boroughs of New York City to come in. And the teens run the conference from, from scratch to finish. They do the workshops. They do the trainings. They do um, the opening ceremonies, the closing ceremonies. It's, it's a really, it's empowerment in, in all its glory. And from there, that wasn't enough for the kids who were involved in the program. They sat down with me for two years and they sat down with curriculum. We're talking teenagers, 16, 17, 15 year olds, saying whatever's being taught in the schools is just not working. And my friends are not responding to it. So mm -hmm. we need to write something that the kids are gonna respond. And it, it took us two years to pilot, but we have a 25 lesson training manual written by kids for kids, written by teenagers for teenagers, uh -huh. to teach them about HIV awareness, safe sex. And combined with that is leadership. So values, conflict mediation, loving yourself, how to do a presentation, how to speak, Wonderful. Um, all, from, all from youth. The other program that is just so amazing that you do that's not necessarily relate, gay related but inter, of interest to gay folks is your short, short stack program. Yes. Let me say that again. Short stack program. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Short stack, short stack. Um, is a phenomenal program and it's uh you know it's one of those things where i wish my friends when they were making fun of me when i was really little could look at me now because the fact that i'm running or overseeing a modeling and fashion program is like just hilarious in itself um but again this was a 15 year girl year old girl who came to me and she said um i want to get into the modeling and, and fashion industry and i obviously i obviously can't because i'm five one and five one five one five feet one inch and i was like okay but why not mm -hmm. and she kind of looked at me and she laughed and she said you don't know anything about modeling and fashion <laughs> to you and I was like I guess not and she's like you know there's certain standards that you have to meet you have to be 5'7 5'8 um, and that's even short and you have to be super skinny and I just looked at her and especially with my background and I said that's dumb why like it, yeah. it didn't make it wasn't you know, clicking with me. It makes no logical sense. So we proceeded to have some, some conversations about standards in society and everything. And I said, you know what? Um, you should think about changing those standards. And she's yeah. like, I'm only 15. And I was like, you know what? We'll think about it. Uh -huh. She came back to me a, a couple of days later and she said, I have an idea for a program. She's uh -huh. like, I want to do workshops and trainings and I want to teach girls who don't fit the standards um, about modeling and, and walking on the runway and doing professional photo shoots and I want to give them the opportunity um, to not feel like what I'm feeling and I want to then go out into the fashion world and say hey listen short people can do this too yes yay yes. short people yes. and five foot four and proud <laughs> <laughs> and from there the program snowballed yeah. um, you know in the beginning I, I tell the story to everybody I thought I was just empowering a 15 year old to have a dream, um, yeah. not realizing how big it was gonna grow. You just had a big uh, runway show, yeah, right? We just did a big classy uh, runway show on Fifth Avenue at the Midtown Loft and Terrace. Oh. Uh, sold out over 300 people. It's our fourth year do doing the show. Mm -hmm. We had sponsors from uh, Bombshell Clothing, Hot Topic, David's Bridal, Pop Chips. Uh, you know, the girl who runs the program, Olivia Mignoni, she's been on Fox 5 News, Daily News, local papers. Um, the message is getting out there because people are looking and saying, you know what? Kids are watching what's happening out in the world and they're getting a message from the world. So if the message is people are not eating and they're dying on the runway so they can have that chance for their 10 minutes of glory, kids are then, you know, repeating that and they're you know, doing the same thing and kids are saying no. You know, Olivia and, and her crew at Short Stack and all the models are saying no, this is not acceptable. Um, we want more, we want we want inclusiveness, we want we want to be part of this world and mm -hmm. you should let us in. Well listen Hal, I want to thank you so much for thank being you. such a gracious guest. You're one of my dearest friends and I'm so glad your ex wife introduced me to you. <laughs> I'm glad too. <laughs> and I love your show. Aww. Keep it going. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My baby, <laughs> baby, I was made to be your man. Ah, oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> We're rolling and ready whenever.